HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world, join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is John Henney. John has decades of experience coaching professional voice users at corporate businesses, the U.S. military, sports announcers, voiceover, and performing artists to become more effective communicators. Author of three Amazon bestselling books, Uh, John hosts the popular podcast, The Intelligent Vocalist, with over 500,000 downloads, huge, and has 130,000 subscribers with 14 million views on YouTube. John is also a seasoned online course creator with an extensive library of training courses for voice professionals. Thanks so much for being here today, John. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to have you here. This is a topic that I think so many people um, struggle with, uh, you know, uh, are uncomfortable, let's say it that way. Um, so let's let's talk about the confidence side. What is it about a confident speaker that captivates us? I think it's it's a number of things, but primarily, it is being able to infuse your speaking voice with with honest, compelling emotion. Mm-hmm. And that is transmitted by allowing your voice, if I dare say, to sing, even in speech. They don't know which came first, actually, speech or singing, but they're oh. extensions of the same thing. And working with great singers... I found the devices they use to create a captivating performance can be used with speakers. And when you start using your voice in a way that holds people's interest as you gain their attention and you realize that you're really being heard, your confidence begins to lift, which then infuses the voice and becomes this very positive loop. That's fascinating. I I wonder which came first. Singing. We don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, who would who would have thought? I'll bet it I was will singing. tell you that even music itself, the way that we process music, like we'll hear certain um, chords as sad and other chords as happy or melodies. Huh. Those are actually tied into patterns of speech that we use when we are sad or when we are happy or excited. That melody is really born from speech. And a lot of what we gain from music is tied into our emotional connection to the speaking voice. Oh, that's interesting. 
So how does imposter syndrome fit into all of this? Yeah, imposter syndrome is something that every entrepreneur is going to deal with. Yeah. And and great performers, you would be surprised because I've worked with some people who you would know. And when they really trust you, you realize that they have self-doubt, they yeah. have moments of imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome to me is just part and parcel with with fear of public speaking or presentation. What it is, is it is turning inward. It's an inward focus and you're worried about what people are going to think about you, how people will judge you. And obviously long ago, when we all traveled around in small groups, if you were ostracized by the group, that could be fatal. So we still have these very deep implanted fears within us, but in modern Mm -hmm. society, that rarely happens. Yeah. So when I feel that myself, if I have to speak to a group and I can feel all of a sudden the internal dialogue start to go, I realize that that's my ego and that's me looking inward. And when I make it less about me and more about the people that I am to talk to and make it about them, that diminishes. Your imposter syndrome diminishes when you realize that you are here to help people. And imposter syndrome doesn't help you help anyone. Oh, that's interesting. So really you're uh, sort of flipping the script, so to speak, right? You're changing your focus away from yourself and how you're showing up to what other people are hoping to gain from what you have to say. Yes. And all huh. your, my focus, all my energy is on that person because right now your audience I have to give people permission to not like me because somebody listening to your podcast is going to go, I don't think I connect with this guy. And I can't worry about that because there are other people that will hear my message and maybe it will resonate with them and help them in some small way. So that's where my focus is. It's only on the people who um, are going to connect. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because not everyone's going to like you. Yeah. Every... Every great artist, I mean, if you think about entertainment, TV shows, uh, film stars, music stars, there are those that just don't connect with you, that you just don't like. There are celebrities you don't like, but that doesn't destroy their career because they just worry about the ones that do connect with them. Okay. Uh, I think I'm getting this. So (laughs) so, (laughs) that's why you're here. So what are like the top mistakes people make with their voice? Like the top three. Yeah, I think the first one is just not having an awareness of their voice and not realizing how important their voice is. If you are in business for yourself, if you are trying to influence people and move people emotionally to make decisions that are that help grow your business, Your voice is the primary driver of emotion. They've done studies where they had subjects try and understand what the other person was feeling. And when they removed the visual component, when they turned out the lights and they couldn't see each other and could only hear each other, their ability to intuitively understand what the other person was feeling went up. So the voice really is everything. And so people... They don't think about it, number one. Number two, those that do, they they try and put a posture on their voice. They think, okay, I want to speak lower because that has more authority. But if you speak at too low of a pitch, your voice is suddenly going to be robbed of energy and it's not going to carry. And what they end up doing then is they start having to squeeze their voice in order to be heard and they can develop vocal issues. So I think it's it's trying to put on a vocal affect. And um, and I think the third one is just not taking care of their voice. Your voice is basically two pieces of soft tissue, the, the size of your thumbnail. And yet so much of your world depends on this voice, depends on these two pieces of soft tissue. And people, 
they don't get enough rest. They're not properly hydrated. They'll they'll speak in loud environments. Certain things, um, alcohol does your voice no favors, cigarette smoke, etc. And then they have an important event where they need to speak, and then they're clearing their throat. Their voice is bothering them. They have pain. So I would say those are the top three. Those are great. I mean, they're not great, but you know, yeah, <laughs> I but could understand. Yeah, yeah, it made sense to me. Yeah. Right. Right. How do we keep a listener's interest, whether it's in a conversation or a meeting or a presentation? So we don't want to put on an affect. Right. We we don't want to overthink it. Uh, but but how do we do it without overthinking it and so that it's more natural? So one of the easiest ways that I suggest people just try this is take something you need to talk about. And I want you to go somewhere where you, where you feel like you can be silly without people judging you. Yeah. A little bit of privacy. And then I, I call it pretend you're in the world's worst musical and you just sing what it is that you have to say. And I don't care if you think you can sing or not, because all speech is really singing and singing is speech. It's just, two different variations and start to feel the melody in your voice, start to feel tempo, how you can speed up in certain sections. And then when you make a point, slow down and see about how pitch change can really hold a listener's interest. The worst thing is when we fall into predictable patterns. If you have to talk to a group about something that's not necessarily compelling, and your speech starts to fall into a lulling pattern, people are just going to dial you out. So it's really about what great singers do. They'll use accents and then they'll pull back. They use dynamics, right? They let their tone get a little brighter when they're excited and then they pull it back when they, when they want you to lean in. And I, just start getting in touch with the music of your voice. All right. Well, that leads me to another question, which is why do most people not like the sound of their voice? Yeah, there, there's a couple of things. Part of it is how we hear our own voice. So our instrument, the sound waves that we create are traveling away from us. And some of the sound waves are reaching our ears, but a lot of the sound waves are bouncing off of other surfaces and coming back to us. And we hear a lot of our own voice is conducted through bone to our hearing. And that's a very different sound than what the listener is experiencing. So someone who hasn't heard their recorded voice a lot will be shocked and go, do I sound like that? Now, someone like you, an experienced podcaster, you're probably used to your, your voice and you understand that's what I sound like. So that's the first issue. The other one is so much of the voice really is resonance. And what resonance is, is when the sound wave is created by your vocal cords, it goes through your throat and mouth. And the interaction of that is really the majority of what the listener hears. It's not what's happening at your vocal cords. It's what's happening in the vocal tract. And if your vocal tract or your resonance, right, if I'm letting my resonance be a little dull or maybe my vocal tract is just a little bit too short, it dramatically changes the sound of my voice. And what I do is I have people start to get in touch with what this resonance, what these vibrations of the voice feel like and how they can begin to open up their resonance to bring in more of the full sound spectrum going from a little uh, cheap stereo system to a $10,000 stereo system. You're just bringing in, right? The music you're playing has the same information. What's coming from your vocal cords is the same, but now it's going through much better speakers. Ah, yes. It's funny because I never liked my voice now. I'm not even sure I hear it because I do this so much that not, I don't even think I pay attention anymore. Yeah, it's it's something it starts with awareness and sometimes awareness is uncomfortable. 
because we we see, oh, I need to fix this or fix that. But the good news is improving your speaking voice, even though it's an extension of singing or or a shade of singing, is much easier than than learning to sing. Although I do employ a lot of the same exercises, we're not looking for extreme range in our speaking voice, but we are looking to have easy access to more range. And so as as your vocal production gets easier, um, when we learn the fancy term acoustic efficiency, in other words, what's happening in your vocal tract, when it's really working optimally, you can fill a room of 50 plus people easily, a hundred people, and they'll all hear you all the way to the back without a lot of effort because the sound waves you are creating have more vibrancy and more information. Wow. Uh, 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 okay. All right. You yeah, talk it gets into so- acoustics. It's kind of, it's pretty wild, but. It, it, yeah, but, but is that like singing from your diaphragm instead of your throat? Is, is that that sort of thing? Yeah. So, you know, the diaphragm is a funny thing because we can, we can go into the whole uh, myths of singing, but, but what the diaphragm does is you actually, it, it, when it contracts, that helps expand your thorax, which brings um, air into the lungs. And then you can't really control its relaxation. There's debate on that. It's really more about getting the sound waves to work optimally. And when you do that, you will feel more ease on your throat. And the reason people feel they're stuck in their throat is what's happening is there's not enough energy in the sound wave. So they are trying to create more energy by squeezing at the vocal cords. Mm -hmm. And so they, they really start to feel this. So it feels like their voice is stuck in their throat. And it's because they're putting the work in the wrong place. Trying to create energy by squeezing the vocal cords is not only really inefficient and hard work, it can create vocal problems and ultimately vocal damage to these two pieces of soft tissue. By learning about resonance and how your voice works optimally, you have more than enough energy and it, and you actually sound better. And then you don't have to work as hard. I see. This is so interesting. Hey there. Are you interested in building your brand, whether it's personal, startup, or corporate, and developing your leadership skills? On Mentor Dialogue, come join me, Mentor Dial, as I interview some of the world's most interesting personalities, entrepreneurs, business people, and authors. I'm proud that this podcast, which is available through all your favorite podcast services, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Check out the Minter Dialogue show on leadership, transformation, and brand strategy, where you'll get stimulating conversations that elevate your energy and spark change. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly. And our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast. HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. 
Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Along those lines, um, you had mentioned some of the things that can hurt our voice and they made perfect sense to me. Um, but if I flip that around, are there things we can do to keep our voice healthy? Absolutely. Um, some of the main things, the voice loves sleep. And I'm so glad things are changing because not sleeping used to be these, this entrepreneurial badge of honor. And now oh. people are realizing, wait a minute, if I'm not sleeping enough, I'm really not a, as effective. So the voice loves sleep. That's when the body is repairing itself. The voice needs hydration. Most of us don't drink enough water. Yeah. Um, sodas and things like that aren't great, even though there are water. Eating a water-rich diet helps as well, fruits and vegetables. And there is what's called systemic hydration, which is the water you drink, the food you eat. That works its way through your system to your vocal cords. That can take a little while. Then there are other ways to really help um, keeping a humidifier in your sleeping environment if it's really dry can be helpful. And I also have a little nebulizer that I put saline solution in. And you can you can look it up, a mesh nebulizer. But this is all the rage amongst singers right now. And what that does is it creates this saline mist that you breathe in and that puts moisture directly on your vocal folds. The other thing is just watching what you eat and when you eat. Reflux is really terrible on the voice. And some people have reflux without realizing they have reflux. And that's where there's this um, pepsin that, that comes up, uh, your esophagus um, can come up and burn the vocal folds, your stomach acid. And so you don't want to eat too close to bedtime. And if you do, you certainly don't want it to be really spicy, acidic types of foods. Uh, that goes a long way to vocal health. And, you know, just doing little simple warm-ups, I'll give you a real quick trick, is if your voice is feeling really tired, go grab a straw. And you can use a couple of cocktail-sized straws, coffee stir straws, or you can use a, a drink straw. And I'm holding one now. And just play it like a kazoo. And you want to feel a little back pressure. So if you have the bigger drink straw, just put your finger on the tip, create a little more back pressure, and you'll feel a bit of a bullfrog throat. And what that does is it backs up the energy of the voice and pushes it back down to the vocal cords. And it's like a little massage. And when you do that, even just for 30 or seconds or so, and then when you speak again, your voice is going to feel lighter. It's going to feel better. Okay. It's like, it's interesting. It's sort of like cleansing, pushing yeah. the crap out. It's interesting. Yeah. I I had no idea there was this much involved in um, <laughs> speaking and doing it effectively and well, resonating know, with people. Your vocal cords, when you're speaking, I ask people how many times they think the vocal cords open and close when they're speaking. And, you know, and people will think about, I ask them, a hummingbird's wings. Do you think it's faster than that? And I'll go, that's 50 times a second. Your vocal folds are opening and closing hundreds of times a second. Every second. And if you're having a busy speaking day, you, they can be opening and closing a million times a day. So if that doesn't have proper hydration, if that just has thick mucus like peanut butter, it's like having gunk in your car engine, it's going to cause problems. Boy, that puts such an interesting perspective on it when I think about if I do an all-day workshop and am exhausted at the end of the day, Yep. right? No matter how much I drink, it feels like it isn't enough. Right. Huh. Try the straw. So yeah. when you have little breaks, yeah, just just try that, and it's really easy. You just do glides, like a car engine starting, sing a little tune like "Happy Birthday," and just work through that straw 
for about 45 seconds to a minute. I'll tell you, it'll give you some relief. That's interesting. I'm going to try that because that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> John, I really, I appreciate this information. It is, it is, first of all, very interesting. Second of all, not anything I, I have heard in the past. And I am learning so much about the things that, you know, even I can do. And I don't have a fear of public speaking. I have some of the other stuff, you know, the the strain and tired and things like that. So uh, this was really valuable on a lot of different levels. Thank you for being here today. Oh, you're so welcome. Will you tell the listeners how they can find you and anything you've got going on that would be valuable for them? Yeah. So my main website is johnhenny.com, J-O-H-N-H-E-N-N-Y. And for speakers, my website is compellingspeaker.com. And there I've got, uh, you can get a free download of quick speaker warmups uh, checklist that you can go through if you've got to do a presentation and your voice is feeling tired just going through that list can help you uh, get your voice going. Oh, that's terrific. I'll make sure that that is in the show notes. So thank you once again. And listeners, thank you. You are who we're doing this for. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Hey there. Are you interested in building your brand, whether it's personal, startup, or corporate, and developing your leadership skills? On Mentor Dialogue, come join me, Mentor Dial, as I interview some of the world's most interesting personalities, entrepreneurs, business people, and authors. I'm proud that this podcast, which is available through all your favorite podcast services, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Check out the Mentor Dialogue show on leadership, transformation, and brand strategy where you'll get stimulating conversations that elevate your energy and spark change.